Anthony Harwig here with a Gerard Volleyball player profile fresh off the Indians' big win over Crestview uh, yesterday. Bree Littell. Bree, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for having me. And like, like I said, th- I mean, we talked about it. You got the post-game interview. This was a big matchup on Saturday over Crestview. We're going to start with it. Um, what what is what's the kind of emotions after now that there's a data taken in? Um, we're still all very excited, and we just got our uh, bracket today for tournaments, so we kind of know like everything that's going on there, and it's just really exciting for us. Tournament time, you guys are the one seed. You've put in the work to get there, uh, and, and you know there's a lot of good teams in this district. What's it mean to you? To, to know that other coaches in this district voted you guys as number one? Um, I think it's awesome because our team's like a family. I think we're different from a lot of schools. And we all have been playing together for so long. And we're so close with Coach Phil. It just makes it so much more fun. And we just love it. Playing together for so long. But next year, I, I know I you know, don't want to go too far in the future here. But next year, you're going to lose a pretty good senior class. And you're going to be the one that has to step up and be a senior leader. Um, what, 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 what kind of things go to your mind when you try to even think about uh, that, that time? Um, honestly, I think I just have to know to be a leader. And honestly, I really look up to Lauren. So I want to be just like her and uh, lead the team and just do my best and get us to where we are now next year. This season, how much have you been taking in watching these seniors lead and watching you know players like Lauren do what seniors have to do so you would be ready next year when you take that leadership role? Um, I know that it's going to be up to me, and I'm going to be like a big part of it. So I just really want to act like they do, and mm-hmm. they're all so caring for us, and they do so much for us. So I want to be just like them and really just make it fun. Not to say that you don't lead pretty well right now, even before your senior season. Definitely one of the statistical leaders of this team, but also, you know, the times that we've been able to see you guys play, emotional leader of the team, energetic leader of the team. Um, how much responsibility do you take to keep this team up and, and going and energy uh, throughout a volleyball match? Um, I take a lot of it. I think me and, me and Bailey are probably like, the most like energetic I think because we play club together so we just kind of like get really excited and uh, I just think it's really fun and I just love I just get so into the game especially when we have big ones so so coach Walters was telling me that uh, back in your freshman season you were the first ever Gerard player to have 57 attempts and, and without an error, and you are such an efficient hitter. Uh, what do you think goes into your ability to stay efficient and stay away from the errors? On Saturday, you only had two of them against Crestview with 23 kills. Uh, what kind of things do you do to try to always keep the ball in play? Um, I think it's just like the amount of experience I have and for how long I've been playing. It's just makes it a lot easier for me to – be consistent um, because of all the time I've put into this sport. And I thank all my coaches for that because without them, I definitely would not be where I'm at now. Yeah. I mean, people only come to Gerard. They just see you play. They don't understand the time that gets put in. So I want to give you a chance to just go into uh, time that you put in on this into the sport outside of just the games at Gerard and what you kind of do to really make yourself the player that you are. Um, you know, like even the off season, like with club and everything, that is a lot of time into it. The, the club season is longer than the school season, so it really helps too. And then also like camps and going to colleges and just mm-hmm. always being around it really helps. All right, so you also get the opportunity to get coached by a couple of different people. You know, uh, you obviously Phil's one of the great coaches in the area for high school, but then you go in the club and, you know, like you said, you're going to camps. You get all these different minds of volleyball, you know, thrown at you. How much does that help you getting, you know, uh, advice from different-minded people and, and maybe different aspects of the game and different points of view? Um, it really helps because you get to know like what other people see and what they think you need to work on. So it helps with like other things. Like some coach will be like, oh, you need to do this. And the other coach will say something different. So it kind of helps to fix in a bunch of different aspects of the game. All right. You are the lefty. 
And yeah. uh, that's how you would kind of present yourself and separate yourself from everybody else on the floor. Um, does that give you any kind of advantage, especially when you're on the right side, being able to stay away from those pins with the left-handed swing? Um, I think, I think it does. Um, I, I really like playing outside too. Like I played right side for club, but a lot of college coaches really like the lefty outside. So it's kind of an advantage in that aspect, but yeah, I definitely think it helps. Um, I just think it's cool to be unique from like most of the other hitters. And Mandy got an aggressive serve too. And this is what we want to talk about. What about your serve and uh, how have you developed that? And what's kind of your serve routine? What do you go back there and what, what's the routine on the service line? Um, so I'll go back to the line and I'll like drop the ball twice and then I'll go like close to the floor four times. That's my twice, four yeah. times. Twice, so what, four it's times. gotta be it. Right. Yep. Um, <laughs> When you kind of look back on your volleyball career, what made you fall in love with this sport? And what age do you think that you really did dedicate yourself to this sport of volleyball? Um, so I started when I was 10 in the summer. I went to a camp at Mill Creek Park. And the coach for YSU now was the one that was coaching it. She used to coach for Hiram, and she was running the camp. So that's when I first started. It was a beach like little thing. And that's when I really fell in love with it because that coach was like, telling my mom she was like oh she's a natural get her into club like tell her to play so I was like okay like maybe this is my sport uh and you know you started when you were 10 you just came off of a, a youth camp at Gerard working that yeah. um how much importance do you put in pouring into the youth of this sport since you know that you were like that when you were 10 years old and it took someone telling you uh how much of a natural talent you were to get you involved in the sport yeah, I really want the girls to play. Like, it's it's the most fun sport, I think, in my opinion, like, in the world. So I really want them to love it, and I want them to see us and want to succeed like we have. I'm going to give you a chance to brag on the sport you love. What do you think is it about volleyball that makes it just unique and more fun than any other sport out there? I think it's not only, like, entertaining to play, but it is probably the most entertaining sport to watch especially like good games it's just so like suspenseful you're always on your toes and you i don't know it's just really fun <laughs> with your athleticism i'm sure other coaches in the gerard school system have tried to get you to be on their teams um well, uh, have you ever thought about doing other sports um so i've done a bunch of sports like before volleyball when i was younger and everyone always tells me to play basketball by horrible basketball so I never do that and uh, sometimes like track uh, sometimes an option but I don't have time volleyball just takes up my whole life so I'm just gonna stick with that um, so you know volleyball does take up your whole life what about off the court what are some ways that you try to get yourself away from volleyball to give your yourself a little bit of a break here and there when you can afford to um honestly Probably just, it's mostly schoolwork, um, hanging out with my team, but even if we're not playing with my friends, with my family, it's just kind of like, kind of a relaxing time, taking naps whenever I can. <laughs> and since you put so much work into volleyball, how have you kind of avoided that trap that some people fall into where, you know, they, they either gas out or, you know, they, they kind of um, put their identity into the sport and they realize they hinge on their successes, their self-value. So how have you kind of, separated yourself from from that yeah that's definitely happened to me before sometimes I just think that oh my gosh this is too much but I know that it's going to take me places and if you need a break then go ahead have a day but I just have to keep pushing and like get my goals you get a ton of support. Your family is probably one of the most active on our social media accounts, <laughs> commenting on every Javard article that we put up. Um, what does it mean to have so much support in your corner, especially like you said, that, that you put so much work into the sport? It's awesome to have them. They're always supporting me no matter what. And I, my mom and my dad are my biggest fans. They're always at my games screaming whenever I get a point or whenever we win. It's, it's crazy. And it's always, there's always some family members there. So it's really nice to have people close to you watching. Are you a part of a big family or is it more of a small knit family? And what do you think makes your family different than some others? Um, I, our family's pretty big, both sides. Uh, 
my mom has like nine aunts, so <laughs> it's definitely a big family. Um, I think we're different because of just how close we are and how much time like we spent together and everything. And we just, I don't know, we have like a bunch of inside jokes, so it's kind of... <laughs> What are some of your favorite family traditions that you guys have? Um, we always go on vacation. My dad's side of the family we always go to Virginia Beach, or now we go to the lake sometimes during the summer for a weekend, and that's always really fun. So I enjoy doing that. What's your favorite vacation spot you've ever been to? Um, probably Clearwater, Florida. Okay. I go there like every year. It's so fun. All right, where's one place that you would love to go that you haven't been able to yet? Um, I definitely want to go to New York City. That's definitely on my bucket list. I just want to go shopping for a day just there and just see the city. All right, we drop you in New York. What's, like, the first place you're going? Like, have you already mapped it out in your head for, for when you eventually get to go there? Um, Honestly, I really want to see, like, the 9-11 memorial. That's, like, really interesting to me, so... I kind of, that's like another big reason I want to go is just to see all that and like just, I think it'd be cool to see all that. What about places you'd like to live? Like if you could live anywhere, whether it be in the country or even out of the country, where's one of your like dream destinations to find yourself? Florida's definitely a big option. I really want to live there because like I want to go into architecture. So it's a good state to do that in and definitely like either that or like a big city. Those are my options that I really like. You know, you've picked some places that are kind of far away. So I'm going to go right into this question. Like when you're looking at colleges, which, you know, junior year is the time to start doing that. Do you start yeah. to look at far away or are you someone that like would ideally like to stay a little bit closer to home? So I've been kind of doing both. Like um, I'm looking at some in Florida. Um, there's some in like PA and stuff. So it's kind of like close and far. It's mm -hmm. just whoever, like, I guess, wants me <laughs> when you're looking at programs what are some things that are on your che uh the checklist that they have to meet uh for you to be interested in, in going to play for them um definitely my education comes first before anything uh they have to have what i want to major in um and also like the size i don't want a huge college i want like decent like not too big not too small yeah like goldilocks you just want it just perfect right yeah so, right. <laughs> Um, when you, when you look at your schooling now and, and what you were going through in Gerard, who are some of your favorite teachers in the school system and, and have any of them kind of impacted your life? Um, well, my mom teaches there, so that's there definitely go. one. And, um, <laughs> probably my Italian teacher, Miss Barber, um, she's always on my side and she's like second mom to me. So I love her so much. <laughs> Would you call yourself fluent Italian? No. <laughs> no. How close? Like, like another year? Uh, if uh, I don't know. If, if, we put, if we put you in Italy, would you still be lost or would you be able to at least communicate? Um, I bet I could probably like order something at a restaurant and I'd be kind of, but there you that's, go. that's probably it. Uh, grazie. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. Um, what about some of your future goals that you have for yourself? Uh, you know, obviously college volleyball, we've already talked about that, but where, what kind of jobs do you want to see yourself in? And if you kind of could put yourself into a spot in, in like five or six years, where would you want to be? Um, definitely have graduated college or like about to finish. Um, I want to be able to one day start my own business in like either interior design or architecture and be able to work in that. And my like lifelong goal is that I want to be able to like build houses for celebrities or like well-known people. That is like always been that's your goal now. What was your goal when you were like seven? What was the what did little Bree want to do when she grew up? Well, when we had our preschool graduation, I still remember this. They asked us before, like what we wanted to be when we grew up. And during it, the teacher was like, Brie let's tell she wants to be a rock star when she grows up. So I guess that was my I guess that was my goal. How have your rock skills developed? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I don't think they did. Do you play any kind of instrument? I don't. Can you sing? No. <laughs> okay, well, maybe, maybe you should stick to business. Yeah, I um, think I thought I could sing when I was little, but I don't think I can. So what, what's your favorite rock song? Let's just go with that. Um, Me and my dad love rock. We always listen to it before games to hype me up. Um, oh, geez. Oh, well, our two ones that we always listen to is 
ACDC Thunderstruck and Enter Sandman by Metallica. Or- all right. All right. Uh, what is one song that you personally could always listen to to get yourself hyped up? Um, Jesus, oh, hard. Definitely those two. And I always listen to um, Murder on My Mind before games. That is my one song. I always listen to it. I don't know why. <laughs> it just it just gets me like, in the game mood. I don't well, know. You do get a lot of kills. So yeah. <laughs> I guess it fits. Uh, it works. What, what about like a karaoke song? If we took you to karaoke night, what song would you have to pick? Um, oh, geez. Probably a song by like Taylor Swift or something. All right, last question. Um, what is one song on your playlist that maybe is a little bit embarrassing that it is on the playlist, but you know you're still gonna jam out to it? Um, I used to be a big fan of Fifth Harmony. I don't know if you know them; they're like a girl band, but I Didn't have that, all their wait. songs. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, Camille Cabello came out of that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, see, I I know the times. <laughs> and, yep. Um, yep. All right, Bree, before we let you go, I want to give you the chance to thank your support system, give them all a shout out and all the people that have been there for you throughout the years. Um, thank you to all my friends and family who always come to my games and support me and my team, my coach, especially Coach Phil for making me the player that I am. And I love all you guys. And thank you for always being there for me. All right, Bree, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. We appreciate it. We wish you the best of luck in your last regular season game next week and obviously your tournament run. And we can't wait to talk to you again real soon. Thank you so much.